Okay, so now we're going to meet some of the students uh, from the program. First of all, we're going to have Jamie Armstrong. Jamie is in cohort two. Cohort two is taking their last class right now, and they're hopefully going to graduate next month. <laughs> and, uh, and also, um, Jamie is, uh, we, we started a program of managing our social media by a student. So we started with Jamie, who got our social media set up, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And he's in the process of transitioning over to a cohort three student. So anything you see on there uh, is run by Jamie. He'll talk about that. Cool. How's it going? Awesome. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not that important. So I could just get a survey. So who comes from an uh, artistic background? Raise your hand. Awesome. And what about business? Do we have people from business ba business background? Cool. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, I graduated from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo in 2013 with a degree in music. I um, wasn't too sure what I was going to do after graduation. I was thinking about hanging around San Luis Obispo, not really sure what I was going to do. I didn't really feel that my undergrad really prepared me for a career in the music industry. So I just went on Google, looked up music business, uh, came across CSUN's MIA program, liked what I saw, watched the orientation, um, and then decided to apply. I got accepted, moved down here right after I graduated, and I've been here for the last two years. Uh, currently, I work over at NBC Universal. I've been there for the last 10 months, working in their TV music department, so helping out with stuff like The Voice, uh, the Mini Project, all these NBC-owned networks. I also uh, work for Opera Music and in Business Affairs, and then currently, uh, Rob, who's here right now, and Brian, who's a MIA Cohort 1 graduate, we just started a marketing company called Disruptive Entertainment and Marketing Group. So helping uh, small businesses and artists, because we found that artists are in themselves a small business, uh, succeed. And a lot of these uh, small businesses and artists have problems with marketing. And so we really wanted to help people and uh, really succeed in whatever they do. Uh, so just as far as coursework, I mean, the classes are great. You have people that are top notch, know what they're doing. Uh, it's just for me coming from an artistic background. I didn't know a lot about business and so um, Going into our first business class it was a little bit intense But having dr. Coors who actually oversees the MBA program help you and really teach you these key concepts was great and You know from day one all of these concepts have been applied in my professional life um, at NBC knowing you know how how the whole publishing system works why we're doing this and why it's important to do this um, and another thing that's great about this program is just opportunities. Um, I think the biggest advice I can give you, just to take advantage of being a student here, uh, whether that's getting to know your faculties, uh, whether that's going to these networking events, or even just reaching out to people that you admire. I kind of took the admire approach. I would reach out to industry leaders. I've reached out to the chief marketing officer at Pandora the head of Network Music Group, and just tell them that I'm really inspired with what they do and do they have any advice for me. And it's really opened up so many different opportunities. Um, and then also, you know, get to know the people in your classroom. I mean, this industry is all about who you know and networking. And one thing is that these people that you're in class with are potentially going to be the next CEOs and presidents of companies that you want to work for. So really value that connection. Help people as much as you can. Um, and looking back on it, on everything after you know two years in this program, you know I wouldn't have done it anything different. I loved it. It was a great experience. It was worth all the time. There's points in which you know I wasn't sure if I was going to make it, but you know I pulled through, and uh, it's been a great experience. I've met a lot of great people. The faculty are great. Uh, you know Professor Christensen and Sermani are you know they're in it because they believe in it. So having people like that supporting you is just awesome. And so if you put the time into it, you know, take advantage of these opportunities, you're going to have a wonderful career in the music industry. And social media. So uh, definitely, if you're, on, you know, if you're really thinking about applying, uh, take a look at our social media. Uh, every time we have a guest speaker, we connect with them, take pictures. Uh, you'll see pictures of our last networking event. Um, I felt that there wasn't a real good connection between the undergrad and graduate students, so I approached Professor Christensen, and we actually put on a networking event meant to build these relationships. And so you can go see some of the pictures. We had Professor Winogradsky speak about the new copyright legislation that came out. Um, so 
you know, if you want to see a little bit of what our lives look like for the last two years, go on social media. Um, you can just find us at CSUN MIA on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So, thank you. Okay, next up is Michelle Miller, who's also in cohort two and uh, working on her last class and prepared to graduate. So. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Michelle. Um, I'm from the Bay Area, from Oakland, California. So is Professor Sarmani. <laughs> um, graduated from UCSB, uh, University of California, Santa Barbara in 2012 with a degree in sociology. Um, and after that, I, I've always like been interested in the music industry, but I never really knew where I would fit in it. I knew that I wasn't really a musician, but I still wanted to be involved. So I started looking up um, different music business programs and found this program. Um, I really liked it for the location that it was in LA. I liked that it was close to home so that I can easily go back to the Bay Area if I want to. Um, and it's also a lot more affordable than other programs. So that's part of which uh, attracted me to the program. Um, how it's helped me, uh, it's really, really stressed networking. Um, one of the classes that you take, you're required to go to a couple of networking events, and that's kind of how I got my foot in the door in the industry now. Um, so I went to a networking event, and there was a panel speaking on A&R, which is what I'm interested in, and I, when the panel was done, I asked a question. And just that kind of, I guess, let everyone in the room know that I was sincerely interested in A&R. And I had a whole bunch of people come up to me um, after the panel was over and give me their business card and say, like, I'm really eager to help you and call me and all these things. And so I exchanged info with a bunch of people, um, one of which who's my current boss at my internship now. Uh, his name is Max Goose. He started his own record label. Um, it's called Artistry Entertainment. It's also a management group, and it's also a uh, consulting firm and a record label. So um, a little bit about him. He was a senior vice president of Def Jam. Um, we're under Universal Music Group now. And some of our clients include, uh, he manages SWV, if you are aware of that group from the 90s, yeah. Um, he, we have um, offices in Seoul, London, Dubai, um, LA, and New York. And we're currently expanding. Um, what his biggest claim to fame and what everyone was impressed with, what I was impressed with, was that he worked on, uh, he was the A&R of Beyonce's I am Sasha Fierce and B Day album. So I'm a little jealous because he knows I love Beyonce and he still hasn't introduced us, but that's cool. Um, but um, so I'm currently interning for him as his executive assistant. Um, and I would say, like, being a part of this program has greatly helped me in that regard because you learn a lot of things about like split sheets and you learn about publishing and you learn about. Um, accounting and all these different things that I can kind of see in my everyday interactions with him. Um, we work with a lot of different people. He also is on uh, the movie side. So we, um, we work with Jamie Foxx a lot. Um, I'm assisting one of his producers who's also signed to Rodney Jerkins and he's doing a lot of projects so I'm setting up studio time and stuff for him and um, Kind of what, whatever my interactions are, I see the foundation that this program has given me being implemented constantly. Um, so I definitely think that uh, this program is a great asset to you if you're interested in the music industry, which obviously you all are. <laughs> um, it's definitely about what you know, which is what this industry teaches you, but it's definitely about who you know too. Um, and I never would have met Max if I didn't go to the networking event that I was required to go to from this program. So, 
that's pretty much my spiel on that. <laughs> yeah, Michelle is one of our best networkers. I think at one of these events, one of the persons said to her, I think you're going to be my next employee, right? Did that happen to her? Uh, no, she's great. And, you know, the opportunities here, you just got to take advantage. There's more events to go to than you can possibly go to. So they're, they're happening all the time. And, uh, and Jamie keeps a running list of that. All right, next up, we have from Cohort One, and he works for the largest record label in the world, uh, the Universal Music Group. And so I'd like to introduce Robert Teagarden. Thank you very much. Um, really excited to be here with you guys again. Uh, Professor Samani asked me to come and talk to you about what my experience has been. Um, it's been an honor because I've been able to do that with, uh, with other cohorts as well. So to be honored and, uh, and asked to come back is, is a pleasure, so thank you. Um, my story was actually, I'm a CSUN thoroughbred, and I graduated right before Carrie took over the MIS, uh, the Music Industry Studies program that we've been talking about. Um, I was one of Joe Leach's students and kept pestering him constantly for dinner, which I paid for, for information about this program. So as it was being developed, he would kind of, you know, on the slide go, well, this is the curriculum that we're talking about. What do you think about this? And I would just be salivating, not because we were at Red Lobster and the infinite crab cakes that they have, but because the content seems so interesting to me. So when, you know, a couple years ago, I was in these exact same seats. And I really was trying to make a move for myself uh, um, and a move for my, at that point, very small and ever-expanding family, um, and really wanted to make sure that I could put us on solid ground, and I knew that education for me personally was the surefire way to do that, right? I'm not saying it's the only way, but for me, that discipline structure uh, and the way in which you're forced to learn in an environment like that really worked for me. So at that time, like Andrew mentioned, I, um, I was working at Universal Music Group. Um, I've been there almost 10 years at this point. I actually graduated the day after I started Universal. So I've been there for a long time, and I work in the copyright and licensing department. Um, so I had a pretty good foundation in terms of what, where my career was, what I was doing. I was in a management position, had a couple people underneath me, but really wanted to take that next step in my career. Um, I knew that a master's degree in some sort was really the way that I wanted to go, um, and I came to this exact information session going back and forth saying, okay, what do I want to do? I don't want a traditional MBA. Do I want to change trajectory entirely, do an, an, a, a, a different master's degree? Um, and I really, I settled on this for a couple of reasons that I want to share with you guys um, that really helped me kind of solidify my, my choice. Um, and hopefully it does for you too. So the first one, we've all kind of been dancing around these concepts. So if I just nail them down, right? The first one is location. We're in Los Angeles. This is one of the major, major hubs of the music industry. Um, Billboard came out with a study a couple months ago that said, so you want to work in the music industry was actually the title, which I thought was an awkward title of, a, of an article. But it gives you know, all the major hubs of where you want to work if you want to work in the music industry. So top of the list in terms of both income and lifestyle and all that stuff, that, it's Los Angeles. It's here, right? What else does that mean for us? Well, really what it means is exactly like Professor Samani was talking about. We went through two whole slides, almost two and a half slides of people that have come and talked to us either at these industry insider events um, or have actually come into class. So not only is it great to see these people face to face and you know, kind of like schmuck like me sit there and talk to you guys, but not only you can actually say, hey, like Jamie did, I really like you. Can we go and we, can we do lunch? Lunch is actually an option, like a follow-up option. And I thought that was incredible, right? You don't get that in Boston. You might get that in Nashville, but it'll have a weird country twang to it. So, so I thought that that was great, right? No offense if anyone has a country twang. I actually find that very nice. So. Um, so really location, I mean, it's, I, I can't really overstate that. Um, it's something that is just so crucial in terms of an industry career. I mean, it makes your life so much easier being here because you're just, I don't want to say minutes away because traffic is very misleading, but you're miles away <laughs> from legendary venues, uh, legendary music companies, uh, and, you know, and th these, they're, they're within you know, an arm's reach. So location's one. The next one that we keep talking about is this cohort setting. And really, the, the thing that was important to me about a cohort setting is this concept that we keep talking about is networking is everything. Networking is everything. That's another concept that can't be overstated, right? And Carrie said this is one of my favorite things, too. It's what you know will get you in the door, but, or sorry, who you know will get you in the door, but what you know will actually keep you there, right? So you're working on the what you know here, but who you know is really important, too. Well, the cohort is actually a built-in mini network. I mean, I got my, my first job from somebody in my undergraduate who I, I you know, hold on to this person's coattails for dear life, um, hoping that I can continue to stay there. But 
same thing with here. You know, we had a cohort that graduated of 25 people. I'm still in contact with all of them today. As Jamie mentioned, one of my, my colleagues in that cohort, we're starting a company together. Um, but another really great thing is that, you know, the third one's already in the works. It's going to be the fourth one where you have several other cohorts to tap onto uh, and, and pull from in your network, right? So the CSUN Music Industry Network is expanding. Um, and we're, you know, for the first two cohorts, uh, at least are very passionate about continuing to keep that effort going, right? So you have this built-in network already there for you. Uh, and just saying, hey, I'm a CSUN music industry student goes a long way for somebody who was a CSUN music industry student. That email gets opened very quickly. Um, I'm trying to think of what my third one was as I was having some great pace and we're going along here. And uh, I don't want to have to open up my phone and look for it, but I just may do it. I'm going to do it. Um, and right as I open it, I'm going to remember exactly what I was going to say. So hold on. Here we go. See, these guys are so much better than me. They didn't have to do this. So the other one is value, right? And value, one of my favorite sayings from this program is, is the difference between value and satisfaction, right? So value is what you look at, at as the exchange of what the cost is, either money or your time invested, to what the benefit you're going to receive from this thing, right? So we can t talk about that as how much is this program, um, how much am I going to have to work to do it. The cost of it is exceptional. The work that you have to put in is extraordinary. But what is the benefit? It's exceptional, right? Satisfaction, on the other hand, is standing on the other side of completing that transaction. How do you feel? Do you feel like you won or do you feel like you lost, right? These guys, these scrubs on over here that are still have not graduated yet, right? They don't know the feeling that I'm telling you from being on the other side. I'm a year after graduation, and I'm telling you that my satisfaction could not be higher, right? Not just because Professor Samani asked me to come and talk to you tonight, but I truly, truly feel this. Uh, it's not only is the, the perceived value just exceptional, right? You look at other MBA programs that are much higher in terms of the cost. But for the reasons that I've actually outlined here, I think if what you're looking for is you know, a career in the music industry, which is a very coveted thing, this is the perfect place to hone your skills, to build your network, right? And to reach out for these people that are actually going to be able to help you make a dent, right? Like I said, a couple of years ago, I was in these same seats. I had much more hair, less wrinkles. My family was a little bit smaller. Um, and right after graduation, my, my wife and I, well, my wife did all the work. I was just supporting her. Gave birth to our first son. Um, and, you know, I really feel like my choice to do this program uh, was very well rewarded. Right now, um, I'm progressing on my career in, in Universal. I have all these outside ventures uh, in terms of what I'm doing with fellow cohorts. Um, and there are other things within the Universal walls that I constantly keep progressing and building on my skill sets that I've learned here. Really widen my lens in the terms of the things that I look for, right? the opportunities that I try and seek out. Um, and it gave me a great foundation of people that I talk to and pull from every day, uh, both in the faculty and the students. And so I hope that you make that choice for yourself. Um, I'm really confident that it would be the same thing for you guys as well. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys very soon. <laughs>